Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. Also posted a link to the Marvel database for this story here. Um, gifts, plot synopsis, uh, character bios, etc. You may hear my dog bark in the background. I apologize for that. Um, it's a very nice day here. And we have uh, doors open. And she is a barker. And not only is she a barker, she has a very powerful bark. So even though I'm downstairs um, in my office and she's upstairs, her bark carries. So... Uh, classic X-Men number 14 from 1987. This is the last issue of Dave Cockrum's first run on X-Men. He comes up shortly after John Byrne leaves. And speaking of John Byrne, he will be the new penciler going forward after this issue. And then when he leaves, Dave Cockrum comes back for... <clears throat> probably another two years after that and then replaced by Paul Smith replaced then by John Romita Jr. Mark Silvestri Jim Lee and there we go so <clears throat> this cover is by Arthur Adams however the inks are by Al Williamson now I don't see a lot of Al Williamson with Arthur Adams, Al Williamson is a very strong inker, kind of a bit of a messy inker, you could say, although he, he has some beautiful work that he has done. Um, I do enjoy this cover. It's um, This is, issue is a reprint of X-Men 107 from 1977. So, Classic X-Men was basically 10 years after these runs. So, here's the original cover. And then, it kind of, why, why do I use Classic X-Men? Because we see all the supplemental material that is added into the, this, um... It gives you a more in-depth, a more, um, oh, it, it just gives you more information that just supplements what, what it was. So, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Here's the front piece by Al Williamson and Arthur Adams. I should say Arthur Adams and Al Williamson. So, I love the uh, screen tones used here on the cape. John Bolton does the backup story as he does with everything. I prefer, um, real quick here, Dan Green is your inker, and Dan Green becomes... Mark Silvestri's inker when he begins his run. Actually, uh, I believe he took John Romita Jr. and then remained with Mark Silvestri. So Dan Green was a longtime inker for the X-Men. So um, I own every issue that I show people. I just prefer to do things digital. It's so much easier to... Uh, show people I do this for fun I just don't um, thoroughly enjoy that whole hey here's my comic books let me just flip through them I just prefer to just show the digital version I figure if you're gonna show comic books might as well so all right um, I have a playlist for X-Men check it out I've been covering everything from Giant Size X-Men on. I am going to cover everything all the way to Days of Futures Past. Then I will skip around uh, 
to certain issues. Not every, just like everything else, Chris Claremont had a very long run on X Men. Some stuff was awesome, some stuff was not. So I'm going to after after that I'm gonna do all the cool stuff and just kind of ignore all the meh stuff. So all right, so. A moment ago, they'd been on Earth. And so, here come the X-Men now. And Wolverine says, where the blazes are we? I really wish we would go back to this, where instead of saying hell or damn, and it's not because I'm some kind of purist or anything. I just think it's more fun. Um, so, um, anyway, um... Here we got Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Wolverine, Banshee, who is my least favorite of the X-Men, uh, Phoenix, and then Storm. I always keep saying they should have killed Banshee and left uh, um, <laughs> th uh, Thunder uh, Thunderbird. Um, so we're going to get a bit of... Um, a recap, and this is the exposition. This is the new supplemental material that was added, kind of giving um, everyone a bit of thought, extra stuff, as well as kind of the recap of everything. So, you know, we got Cyclops stuff. We got uh, Nightcrawler here. He's like, fantastic. This is a real Star Wars Got Wolverine here. Been too long since I was really able to cut loose. If I die today, I won't die alone. So, um, that kind of stuff. So, and then of course Phoenix here. Just so a lot of exposition being given. Chris Claremont will put in so many words, and so, um, I'm going to kind of just skip it around. But here we're just basically getting extra stuff. Um, like I said, so. Here's Storm's thoughts. Storm and, and Jean Grey are uh, gotten real close. Oh, Jean, I sense such joy in you. As if this was your true home and no longer Earth. So, all right. And then, of course, we get here. Where No X-Men Has Gone Before is the title of our story. Um, This was, the like I said, the other two pages were supplemental. And here is where we're going. So... Um, Storm asks Cyclops, you know, in in a way, I mean, she doesn't really ask a question, but she says his name, and Cyclops like, I don't know. Our coming here was Phoenix's doing, and I have a feeling if she doesn't know the why or where for, judging, f and then, um, Nightcrawler says, judging from the look of our reception committee, my friends, I wonder if we'll live to learn the answer. Of course, there are all these people here are like aliens. So. And so here we have Gladiator. So. Uh, this lady's asking who are these people. They materialize, materialize out of the Stargate right after Princess Lilandra. But are they friends or foes? So. Uh, uh, Cyclops says Storm it's incredible I can understand their language and Cyclops says count your blessings Storms let's see if they'd rather talk than fight you beings we are the X-Men from planet Earth we've come from the woman Lilandra and Eric the Red and Gladiator says aliens I'm Gladiator Praetor uh, of the Imperial Guard you are surrounded by that guard and outnumbered Praetor is in reference to the uh, Roman guard. They the, the Romans had a Praetorian guard, which were like bodyguards and intelligence officers, that kind of stuff. So they were basically elite. So uh, Praetor is a singular member of the Praetorian guard. So um, the princess you seek is a traitor to our to, uh, to the empire and our prisoner. We will not give her up. And uh, off panel. Then we will take her. And uh, Cyclops uh, hits uh, Oracle. Or, or which one is? I don't know who 
half these people. I know him. That's uh, a lot of these other people I don't know. So, Oracle, look out. So, this one must be Oracle. The man called Cyclops, his energy beam has felled Mentor. So, okay. So, we've got uh, Oracle and Mentor. So, Mentor would have been this one here that looks like uh, Brainiac. All right. He'll pay for that, Oracle. I swear it by Ch uh, Cheetah China. I'll crush the life from his body with my bare hands. Imperials attack. And so here we go. The X-Men and the guard are about to have a rumble. So uh, Storm tells Banshee to go up in the air. Maybe they'll have better luck. And you can see here as they kind of take the high ground. And so, uh, <laughs> Wolverine, who, by the way, uh, number one, the mask is evolving, but not quite to what we're used to. Kind of like still spiked up here. He's still a bit of a jerk. Um, well, Summers, here's another fine mess you've gotten us into. What's with Jeannie? And Cyclops says, what do you expect? Her power just shot us across the universe. She's out on her feet. And then he thinks, back off, Wolverine, or so help me, I'll... But then, of course, he's thinking. He doesn't say it out loud, so... And this person here is Hobgoblin, who I guess that did never took off. And, of course, Marvel eventually does create a Hobgoblin for Spider-Man, but... Uh, um, whoever they are, these aliens fight well. The sheer ferocity of their attack has given them the edge thus far. Hobgoblin, can you shape-changing... Can your shape-changing powers come up with something to blunt that edge? I think I have just the thing, Tempest. So Hobgoblin and Tempest. And he becomes this huge monster thing. Um, and Nightcrawler's like, anybody got a shadow I could hide in? So Colossus is like, find cover, Nightcrawler. I will try to hold this horror as long as I can. So... Peter, no, somehow by thought alone, that Hobgoblin character can change his shape into any form he pleases. You can't stand against. Wait a minute. With that image inducer, so can I. And so he basically creates another monstrosity here. So, and off this goes. And he's, you know, he gets, makes his uh, concentration slip and then he reverts back to uh regular and then nightcrawler um punches him out cold so here we go wolverine of course is just slashing around and uh this guy from behind uh it's called solar no the fury of this i don't know who this guy is so Assassin, you threatened the woman I love. Fall, Wolverine, before the unfettered fury of of the solar firestorm. So another guy kind of like Fire Lord. So uh, his name is Starbolt, I guess. So, and he loves uh, Oracle here. So, so here, he, like I said, he gives Wolverine and kind of burns his clothes off and this uh, oracle uh, giggles away. Well done, uh, Bolt. I think you cinched his whiskers and taught him a well-deserved lesson. And then he, he Wolverine grabs her and says, Lady, if anyone's learning a, a lesson, it's you and your flame-faced buddy. And he tosses her at Starbolt. Nobody laughs at Wolverine, says Wolverine. And so... Um, hurting from that flame blast, but I can't let it bother me. I got to keep tramming or trimming the odds. And what's that? Hey, this is too good to miss. You, Furface. Yeah, I'm talking to you, bub. Wolverine needs a target, fella. And it looks like you're elected. So, here we go. And so, here is Lilandra's brother. I think he's uh, the Emperor, De Ken. And so, magnificent. You've chosen worthy champions, little sister. Such a pity your cause is 
is doomed as are you. The Ken, Shikari. Please, so Shikari is, of course, Eric the Red. Um, please stop this madness before it's too late. Uh, madness within the crystal lies ultimate power. Force nothing in the universe can withstand, and it will be mined. And then whoever this thing, a guard or whatever. Silent woman, for you comes death and worse than death. I don't know. But so here they're um, a soul drinker, I guess, is about to take her. So I don't know whether that's what the he becomes or if it just appears. So. And so Cyclops is like, that scream, Lilandra, there's something materializing next to her on the days. I can't get to her on foot. You can see that uh, Jean Grey or uh, Phoenix is starting to uh, come to. And I don't have a clear shot for my optic beams. Jean, I'm trying, Scott, but I still feel so weak. I need time to build my strength. I'm sorry. Um, Never fear, my friends. I'll rescue your... A uh, young, young damsel fair. So, Nightcrawler teleports, and he's like, "My God, what is that thing?" Um, Nightcrawler, flee, X Men. I am lost. Save yourselves while you can. And Nightcrawler says, "I'm a, uh, I'm a man of my word, Princess. Leave me, I beg you. I told Cyclops I'd rescue you, and rescue you I shall, assuming this." Verdammit chain ever breaks. So. Nightcrawler, of course, does break the chain. And uh, Emperor uh, Deken. Or actually, Deken is the first name. Uh, last name is, I think, Neramani. So. Uh, Lilander's free. Curse that two-toed alien. Once a soul drinker is summoned, it will not return to its own dimension without claiming a soul. The Outlanders endangered us all. Get over... Oh, okay. Get over there, fools. Make sure that the demon takes my sister's souls and none others. And so... Let's go, your highness. I think we've just about worn out our welcome, says Nightcrawler. Princess, what's the matter with you, woman? Nightcrawler, I can't. And she screams it. Ah, she's petrified with fright. That soul thingy must have her in some kind of mind lock. So, here he comes. And so, he grabs her and they um, uh, teleport away. And, of course, it hits this uh, poor thing. And so, um, Nightcrawler, you made it. And he's like, barely. Never teleported such a distance carrying a passenger before. Didn't realize the strain would be so great left me too weak to even stand so we've got nightcrawler down gene gray is not doing very well so all right princess Tog, you asked for our help and the x-men came but we haven't a chance unless we know what we're here for and what we're supposed to do and make it fast we're running out of time you speak truer words than you know cyclops so so her brother essentially discovered the deadliest weapon ever created, and he wanted it for himself. She, of course, opposed him. Um, so they, uh, and uh, he had her arrested. So her brother said that she tried to kill him and take over the the empire, which was not true. But then, um. Some people uh, were on her side. Some people were on his side. And there was a civil war. And the final battle was fought above the very world that they're in. Um, she was held aboard the Imperial flagship. And she was going to be uh, executed. And her brother wanted the last sight she saw to be his triumph. But she managed to escape and sabotaged the ship. But it was too late because her ships had been beaten and her cause was lost. So kind of here we get how, why she basically 
this whole thing between her and Xavier. So um, she was trying to shake off the pursuit. And in her mind, she saw the face. And it was as uh, she says here, it was as if I'd found a missing piece of my soul, my inner self. In that instant, I was bound to Charles Xavier and he to me. So this is why her and Xavier are, are a couple. Basically, they are, uh, I don't know, bound to each other. The Ken had uh, telepathic spies who felt that uh, uh, rapport. So on Earth, he already had some spies in there because Earth was already becoming famous for you know, all these other battles before. So they contacted an agent on Earth, which was a Devon Shikari, who happens to be Eric the Red. So now we're kind of getting all the, all the gaps that we have. We're now basically getting everything caught up that's been happening here. So basically Eric the Red was given the orders to either kill Xavier or fail her from um, contacting each other. So basically that was it. So he decided, hey, let's just eliminate the X-Men. So that's why we have everything that's been happening through. So um, like I said, I have a playlist with the X-Men. So everything, including Fire Lord. So all that has been covered. So. So Cyclops says, what's all this been for? And he says, the oldest of all reasons, Cyclops, power. According to legend, older than known history, the great crystal, whatever, Macron, uh, is a gateway to ultimate power. My brother seeks a gate that opens once every million years when those nine Death Stars enter a certain alignment. So they're making sure you see those nine stars. So, And within... The crystal, so the legend says, is a force known only as the end of all that is. My brother's heart desire. I never understand why people want to destroy the universe. But hey, who am I to disagree? So, And so the uh, gladiator says, uh, yes, princess. And what right have you to deny it to your emperor? You swore an oath to serve him. And so Lilandra says, This trans uh, transcends an oath sworn to a madman. Open your eyes, gladiator, before my brother's dream of imperial glory close them forever. So, I do not care. Ours is not to question, but to obey. And our emperor's will is that you and your companions die. So, and now we have the star jammers who make their first appearance here. Um, and you can see Phoenix and uh, Cyclops um, hitting uh, Gladiator here um, and here off panel. I hope that hurts, Gladiator. It is of consequences, Frank Corsair. If it did, the battle's... Uh, the way this battle's going, it won't be long before the Emperor gets his wish. So we have Chod and Corsair speaking. So Corsair says he, they need to stop the Ken from doing what it is, but he's going, but he's not going to make anybody else um, come with him. And of course, everybody agrees to go with him. And we, of course we have uh, Chad, uh, Hebsabah, Raza, and uh, this little Sikorsky, Sikorsky. So they're all going to help the X-Men. So so the X-Men continue to fight. Um, and of course, Wolverine was uh, pretty much naked. So he is going to, he took the clothes off that other guy. So, um, so he took he took his and left the other guy naked. So, but I don't think we see him again. So, um, Wolverine goes from behind and and goes to uh, fight 
beast guys you know everybody here has this has a name but it just most the only people you really need to concern yourself with is gladiator he i think he's the only one that's still uh with it everybody else i think has been replaced or just doesn't show up again but uh so this guy looks just like colossus um so I'm sure his name was in there somewhere. So this was what Astra, and uh, I was seeing if I could see the name, but I guess I don't. So anyway, so here they go, um, the Imperial Guard fighting the X Men. So and uh, Lilandra's like Gladiator, and he's like, no, Lilandra. I'll not listen. So it's just kind of funny how some loyal soldiers will do whatever orders they're given, regardless of whether or not, just because they obey. That's it. So, and so this guy here says, prepare to meet your gods, outworlder. And so um, they both have like optic beams. So here they go. And so then they knock each other out. So. Gladiator is like, and to think I, I, there was a time when I cared, uh, about you. And he's like, Gladiator, I'm trying to save the empire. The Ken will destroy it. And he's like, how do you know? I don't know. I fear. <laughs> how do you know? I don't. <laughs> that is, so. Uh, oh, Claremont. Um, you know, I, I sometimes make a little fun of Chris Claremont, but he's a, he is a hell of a writer. The guy is is a good good writer. Um, I really wish he would he was still right. He's still under contract, but for some reason he doesn't really do anything. Um, Marvel doesn't give him work, but he's under contract with them. So, um, I know of the forerunners who created this force he seeks, and from the name they uh, gave it, the end of all that is. You're wasting your breath, Princess. Gladiator won't believe you, but be thankful that others aren't so pig-headed. And he's hit from behind. Of course, she says, who? And of course, it's the uh, Star Jammers. Now, that previous part was supplemental material. This is the actual first appearance of the, how they first showed up. But like I said, the supplemental material is good to give people a little bit of exposition of everything that... Uh, so... Here they go. The Star Jammers. So. They go and save uh, Lilandra. So they are now going to help the X-Men dispose of the Imperial Guard. So. Um. I am pleased to meet. Or I am pleased to know you. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so all right so eventually the x-men and the star jammers are able to dispatch the um uh royal guard here so um anyway so at this time the they don't know each other or they don't know who each other is i believe so so corsair says um we're here for the same reasons to stop the emperor we'd best get down to business fine and corsair thank you no sweat pal we'd have been here sooner if we hadn't had to sneak our way in and so jean gray is the american slang and accents this is far from home I've heard of coincidence, but this is ridiculous. I better do a mind scan just to make sure we're in for no surprises. No, it can't be. But, okay, Scott, no, it is him, she thinks. So, um, Claremont's already setting things up here. Uh, here, Deken says, do your worst, fools. It will make no difference. Um, and this, of course, um... The Shi'ar, I think, are a bird-like race. So, 
That's the thing. My people are feline that can, and cats eat birds. So, you forget, barbarian, that my avian race conquered yours and made you slaves, and I shall conquer you. Look to the sky, Cretans. You're too late. The Death Stars are aligned. In another moment, the gateway will open, and absolute power will be mine. And so you can see from these stars, they hit this beam, and it... Uh, does basically what it says. Um, slowly, the ancient gem begins to pulse, the power within building geometrically, the crystal glowing ever brighter until it seems almost like a star itself. And then, when the gem can take no more, the newborn star explodes. And so, in that instance, all existence goes blink. I love that. So now we're on Earth here. Uh, we've got Stark, or, and so, of course, we got Peter Corbeau. If it hit us too, Dr. Richards, a total disruption of our physical reality. For a fraction of a second, we cease to exist. I know the effect was felt on Earth, but what could have caused it? I like it. What could have caused it, man? <laughs> 70s. I have no idea, though we've some possibilities, but I can tell you, what will happen if these cosmic blinks keep get keep up or get worse? The fabric of time and space will tear itself apart. The universe as we know it will die. So this concludes the main part of the uh, X-Men here of this issue. And now I'm again. So this will also be Dave, like I said, Dave Cockrum's final uh, issue until he comes back after John Byrne leaves. So next issue starts John Byrne's run. And so these are just some of the edits that were made um, into the uh, X Men from the original. Um, some of the things you can see they. Other than recoloring uh, some stuff, they added some more language here. So, um, and so this here, um, again, um, it changes to dialogue. Just the the consistent. It's really cool how. I, I really enjoy classic X-Men, so you can get classic X-Men for very, very affordable. So feel free if you find them on eBay or just at dollar bins or whatever, pick them up. It's it's good uh, to get these uh, classic X-Men. So, and again, um, more dialogue changes. So classic X-Men is why I prefer to show you guys this rather than going through uh, the regular issues of X-Men. So... All right, so then, of course, we get our supplemental stuff. So this is basically how Lelandra, uh, you know, the trial and all that kind of stuff here. John Bolton is the artist for this part. Again, um, oh, and Tom Arzakowski, who is not yet the regular letter, is the letter for the supplemental materials. Tom Arzakowski does eventually come, and then he remains letter all the way to the end of Claremont's run. So. And so we're basically getting the whole trial. Kind of everything that she explained um, in here. Um, I'm not really going to give it to you per se. Because it was already covered. And I've already been spending like 35 minutes on this. So I know that um, you don't, you know. There's no sense in uh, basically rehashing the what it was. But this is essentially the trial that they were going to do for her and how she managed to escape. So, um, John Bolton is a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. Unfortunately, it's common. So if you try to Google John Bolton, you're going to get a lot of people. Mostly, you're going to get the old ambassador, the um, uh, John Bolton, the politician. Uh, so you got to do John Bolton art if you're going to Google some of his stuff. 
or or John Bolton Marvel or whatever. He's done some work, uh, painted work. Um, he is the guy who, when I draw women, the nose particularly, he's the guy who whose style I use for for the nose. You see how he just does the thing and doesn't really. That is actually a lot of what I do. So. Um, so, yeah, you can see this supplemental material is just perfect. So, again, we're just getting basically that little explanation she gave. This is just a bigger, um, a bigger way of doing it. So, and so. So these are supposed to be feathers, by the way. Their hair. They don't have hair. They have feathers. And so... Basically, everything's going as she... As she had said. So, again, it's just supplemental. He's just giving it in a little bit more detail so and here we go so um and then of course we get the back cover because classic x-men had a front cover a back cover there was no ads in classic x-men so it was cover to cover so so there we go so Classic X-Men number 14. Um, just. It's just good. Good stuff. Um, with everything. With the supplemental material. Covering X-Men 107. Uh, Chris Claremont. Dave Cockrum. Dan Green. Um, John Bolton. And. Uh, yeah. So. Good stuff. Like and subscribe, and I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.